Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Give me liberty or give me death! First off, I want to salute everybody who came out here in defiance of tyranny! Civilizations go one way or the other. You either become more free or you become enslaved. And there are only a few countries worldwide where you can still own firearms. Governments worldwide controlled by powerful anti-free market corporate interests like Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan and others have financed programs from Australia to France, from England to South Africa to disarm the people. Whether it was King George 235 years ago who wanted disarmed slaves, or whether it was Santa Anna 177 years ago, or whether it was Adolf Hitler or Mao Zedong, these scumbags are all the same! Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday transmission. It is October 20th, 2013. We're going to be here for the next two hours, and I am very thankful to the good Lord above that everything went off safely yesterday at the Second Amendment rally in San Antonio with the open carry in defiance of the unconstitutional city ordinance they have against having long rifles in public, which violates state law. And the open carry, uh, Texas open carry and others are the cutting edge of human rights, God-given rights. They are the real modern civil rights movement. And so I do intend today and, and throughout the week to get the uh, leaders of these different groups on the syndicated radio broadcast. But today, coming back uh, in the next segment, I'm going to give the number out for folks that were there. It was at least 1,500 people there over the four hours. The police estimated a crowd of about 1,000 people at any one time. Uh, the New York Times and Associated Press estimated it at about 500, but it was well over 1,000 people. And then down the street, uh, they had the Moms uh, Demand Action or Bloomberg-funded uh, Operative Demand Action uh, from my research. And they had about five people at an outdoor restaurant that had about 10 other people there uh, who it turned out were our listeners uh, and were not there in support of them. I feel very sorry for these people. I think they were uh, folks that are being manipulated by the system, not bad people. They have a word for it. It's useful idiots. I don't think they're useful idiots so much as they are well-meaning people being duped. And it was very, very sad. In fact, we're going to premiere. Crew did a great job going out there. David Knight and his sons that have moved to Texas and are working with him. Uh, and uh, Kit Daniels and, of course, Shakari Jackson uh, did an amazing job. And then they stayed up late last night uh, putting together um, excerpts of speeches we're going to be playing today. And also the confrontation, the friendly confrontation. I mean, they slapped me on the arm and pushed me and spilt beer on us and got in our face. And it's all on video. When we just peacefully showed up uh, at the uh, five bureaucrat or five mom uh, march. And I said at the end of my speech, I said, don't be mean to the million moms when they show up to protest us, all five of them. It turned out that was probably an exaggeration. I think there were four of them. Four of them when we got down there. So we kept saying, are you with them? Are you with them? I'm like, no, no, it's just these people. But they got all this big international attention. Al Jazeera, CNN, you name it. They would shoot video of them, not showing a crowd in the background, but the street, so that they couldn't point out that there wasn't anybody there. So that's coming up as well. We've got a lot of big geopolitical and financial news, uh, but uh, most of this is going to be about the Second Amendment today in the historical situation that took place. We are live and broadcasting worldwide on this Sunday edition. A really historic event happened yesterday, uh, more historic than I even thought it would be, at the Shrine of Texas Liberty, really the 1776 Part 2, Lexington Concord Part 2, the Alamo in the Alamo City, San Antonio. This is now national news on every major TV network out there, uh, BBC, Al Jazeera, 
worldwide, people are seeing citizens, individuals, by the thousands with so-called assault rifles strapped to their backs or held in their hands or held above their heads, like Charlton Heston said, from my cold, dead hand, at the Alamo. And the corporatist, globalist establishment press that thinks they've conquered this country, the anti-free market gangster media that wishes to consolidate control and extinguish we the people having any control over our society. For weeks, they demonized Texas Land Commissioner Jerry Patterson, who is the most staunch Second Amendment supporter in the state government. I mean, he really has been a treasure to this state and the country. If it wasn't for Jerry Patterson, because I was down there 20 years ago as a citizen fighting against gun control legislation, I remember before he was even a senator, he was there battling it. And then he was the senator by 1993. And if it wasn't for him, they would have already restricted the Second Amendment even more in this state. And because of uh, lack of funding and other issues, the state took over the Alamo a few years ago from the daughters of the Republic of Texas that a lot of my family uh, are members of. And it's a good organization, but they couldn't, uh, you know, obviously raise the funds to upkeep the old building and the maintenance and the security and the bureaucracy and all the different federal zoning rules. And so Patterson has taken it over as land commissioner, and there's never been a political rally at the Alamo since 1836 when they killed those 180 plus men in there, including Tejano Texans who were standing against the dictator Santa Ana. And they would not turn their guns in. That's what started the Texas Revolution of all the abuses. Santa Ana came in and he said, all you people that got land grants in the last decade, A, we're going to take your property, we're going to jack up your taxes, and you can't even have your guns. First it was you can't have your guns in town. Then it was you can't have your guns off your property. And then in the space of a year, Santa Ana said, you know what? I want all your guns turned in, period. And they said, there's no way we can turn our guns in. There was the Comanche and the Apache and all, you know, huge wars going on. It was... a uh, all these different factions, extremely violent, extremely historic what was going on. Uh, and so Santa Ana sent in troops and would massacre entire towns, in some cases including women, famous massacres. You can look them up where they would kill, in some cases, hundreds of people who would even give up and they would still execute everyone. So the, Santa Ana, by the way, was overthrown later in Mexico after he lost Texas and California and New Mexico and Arizona. And of course it had been Russian, California had been Russian and Texas had been French and British and everything else. Uh, I mean, Mexico still claims they own the Southwest. Mexico only had it for a very short period of time. Everybody was grabbing it. Indian tribes were fighting with each other over it, but that's a historical uh, segue or, 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 or a really historic uh, almost rabbit trail. So I won't go down that. The point is this was historical. There has never, and, and I get invited to a lot of rallies around the country, and I don't go to a lot of them because digitally, I can sit here on the radio and, and, and my nightly news and uh, Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com, and let's not exaggerate, about a million people a day on Infowars.com, about a half million a day on PrisonPlanet.com, three million radio listeners a day on the radio, total listening or watching the show, 15 million a week and growing exponentially. Uh, we're one of the biggest radio shows in the world now. Thank God and thanks to our supporters and folks, uh, you know, standing by us and our sponsors and the fact that people are hungry for liberty. We don't need to go out and speak to crowds. It's important to do it. I like to do it. It's very primitive and primal to go out and give a speech and then shake people's hands. And uh, it's energizing. I like to do it. It's just that it's more effective to digitally broadcast and transmit and stream out to the world. But this event, I said, I want to come to that. And I went, and I didn't realize that they'd never had a political rally since 1836. That was a political rally in 1836, knowing that 5,000 troops were marching on the Alamo and still staying there and not evacuating and saying victory or death. 180-something men, few women, few children, less than 200 total. I didn't realize that Patterson had been under attack in the London Guardian, in the Associated Press and the San Antonio Express News, you name it, for saying we're going to have the first 
rally ever. But it wasn't political. They haven't had a rally, period, there. In, in the 177 years, Patterson, because I hadn't been following and I was just invited to speak, so I went. He said, look, in the last few weeks, he said, look, to the London Guardian and everybody, he said, look, they died because Santa Ana was coming to take the guns. It started at Gonzales when they fired the cannon at the troops and said, come and take it. That's where that saying comes from. And the people that died here at this burial site, who didn't surrender and fought to the last man, they, Davy Crockett, William Barrett Travis, Jim Bowie, you name it, legendary. As the 300, you know, that fought off the Persians, the, the, the 100,000 Persians, or stopped until reinforcements could get there. This is world famous. It's in the top two or three famous military events in, in the last thousand years, conservatively. If you look it up in historical text, I mean, it's right up in the top four or five, conservatively. Probably in the top two or three. And they've never had a rally there of any type. Well, this wasn't political. This was about basic rights. And Patterson's right. Do you think Davy Crockett and William Barrett Travis, who fought and died so that people wouldn't have their right to keep their arms taken, just like at Lexington and Concord in 1775, they wouldn't turn their guns in. The British regulars said, we're coming to kill you and burn down your house. Anybody doesn't turn your guns in. And they said, we're going to meet on Lexington Green. And when the Redcoats, who outnumbered them nine to one, came marching up and lowered their muskets and said, we're going to fire on you. The folks at the Green there in 1775 famously said, in fact, will you guys pull up the, the uh, words, the final words before the shot heard around the world at Lexington Green, because I want to get the exact quotes. Uh, but the head uh, pastor there in charge, he said, look, we're not here to kill anybody, but we're not giving up our guns and our rights to self-defense. If they want a war, they're going to get one, but wait till they shoot at us first. Do not shoot at them. And the, of course, the Redcoats fired on them, said, lay down your guns. They didn't lay them down. And uh, the Redcoats fired, and that was the shot heard around the world. The, the come and take it groups that organized this, they were told you're going to be arrested when you come down there with your guns, violating city ordinance, it's self-violating state law. And they said, fine, we're still coming. And I still said, I'm still coming. That's when I was saying, oh, okay, I will definitely bring a gun now. I brought a, a 223 uh, M4 just because it was light and easy to carry, put on my back. Just to show people, I mean, look, cops have guns, it's okay. Why is it bad if citizens have guns? Criminals aren't going to let you know they're coming with a gun. And notice nothing bad happened, nobody got hurt with over a 1,000 people with firearms in one place. Now, separately, there was a rare shooting in San Antonio yesterday where two reported, they've now been charged uh, or had uh, their uh, bail set at half a million dollars apiece, shot at a cop and hit his computer and splattered glass in his face, they're, and they're going to be charged with attempted murder. Notice that was drug-related gang bangers shooting at a cop, but not us. See, there's the difference. Criminals are always going to have guns. Turns out these guys were criminals with criminal backgrounds. Oh, they had guns illegally. But see, this thousand-plus people with guns who were citizens, no problem. I get to the Alamo, and I learned that it will be the first speeches ever officially given in defense of the right to keep and bear arms since the Alamo was overrun and the few survivors massacred in 1836. And I got there because I hadn't been following the whole thing in great depth. I was covering so many other news stories. I just knew it was historic. I didn't know how historic that we gave a pro-Second Amendment, non-political, basic human right declaration there with so many great activists, uh, active duty master sergeants in the U.S. Army like C.J. Grisham, who was just out with his son going through the hill country and marching down the road to, to get a merit badge. And the police arrested him saying Californians drove by and it's all on video and don't like seeing your gun. And he said, but it's not illegal. And they said, doesn't matter. He was found not guilty on Friday or, or technically it was a hung jury. Uh, I can't believe some of the jurors wanted to convict him of uh, failure to follow a police officer's order or whatever it was, uh, which he didn't even fail to follow those unlawful orders. Just insane how even in Texas, they're trying to disarm us. By the way, I found the quote, John Parker, Captain John Parker, a Battle of Lexington and Concord, 
One of Parker's company uh, recalled that uh, he said, stand your ground, don't fire unless fired upon, as they came to confiscate the guns, the British Redcoats. But if they mean to have a war, let it begin here. Paul, revealed, uh, Paul Revere uh, recalled it as it being, let the soldiers pass by, do not molest them without they begin first. And then going on to say, stand your ground, don't fire unless fired upon, but if they mean to have a war, let it begin here. And there just comes a time when you can't lay down and be a slave anymore to all the multinational banks that have hijacked the federal government. And I'm using my First Amendment so that we don't have to go to muskets. And that's why we have to openly bear arms to show people that it's not dirty, it's not bad for a citizen or a civilian, as the military government calls us, to own firearms. And there were so many special forces, special warfare people out there, and, and, and San Antonio cops off-duty uh, wearing their, their, their private firearms, uh, and so many uh, police being supportive of us, including the police chief down there. Uh, now that he's got public support to support the Second Amendment, they've been moving to try to now get the city to repeal the unconstitutional restriction on open bearing of uh, long arms. And I ran into so many other uh, folks. I ran into two different PSYOP officers, one from San Antonio, one from Austin, who said exactly what you say on the air is correct. All the PSYOP officers in the state we talked to, about 80% of them are fully awake to the New World Order takeover, how America's been hijacked and what's happening. We've looked into all the documents, the foreign banks bragging about it. Everything you've said is true. We verified it. Uh, we've been told to engage in domestic takeover, psyops now. We're not going to be part of it. See, the government's gone so far as this year issuing a new army manual, 2013. Judicial Watch sued and got the document a few months ago. DrudgeReport.com covered it so the world knows about it. And it says George Washington and other founders would not be welcome in the day's army. Well, the army now, even privates are told to read this new manual where they hear about how freedom's bad and guns are bad and uh, all the rest of it. And uh, most of West Point's training now, this is in Forbes and Associated Press, is to take on gun owners, returning veterans, uh, private property advocates. I mean, the, the military knows. There was an article in the local Florida newspaper Friday about how they're training for martial law. I mean, the troops are totally awake now because myself and Ron Paul and countless others warned everyone up front that all this was coming. There's going to be armored vehicles. They're training to take your guns. They're, they're training under RAND Corporation plans to stage terror attacks and take over. The government runs al-Qaeda. The government's illegitimate. Criminal elements of the government are behind al-Qaeda. Now all that's mainstream news. Now U.S. Special Forces for two and a half years have been training al-Qaeda forces in Jordan, Iraq, and other areas like Turkey to invade Syria. And the special forces have spread the word that they've been ordered to train al-Qaeda. And it's caused a total 180 in the military. <laughs> they had the San Antonio Express News out there, and I saw them do it with Jerry Patterson, the land commissioner I've known for like 18 years. And they come right over to him as we're standing back behind the deal, getting ready to speak. And they go, hey, that's Alex Jones right there. And I wouldn't listen to all of it. One of my associates heard the whole deal. I was like 15 feet away and Saw the guy talking to him. My associate was about five feet away and heard the whole deal. And then I later saw it in the San Antonio Express News, the distortion of it. Not that I even care. It's just it shows how they manipulate the dinosaur media. They're like, there's Alex Jones who says George Bush blew up the towers and that George Bush put bombs in it. And there's Alex Jones, and he's going to speak on the same podium. And, of course, Patterson running for lieutenant governor. I do support him for lieutenant governor. I couldn't think of anybody better. Um, Patterson, you know, on the spot, being a politician, goes, well, I don't like that, you know, that's what he says, but maybe, you know, I don't like sharing the podium with him, but maybe he doesn't like sharing it with me. But you can see where they don't even quote him, they paraphrase it in the paper. And then I had already been told about it. They said, no, they were trying to get Patterson to talk bad about you. But he was like, well, if he does say that, I don't like it, but maybe he doesn't like me. I like George Bush, was the quote. But the issue is, when I say our government has criminal elements in it using al-Qaeda and letting them attack us so that they can take our liberties and freedoms, and so the military-industrial complex, the private interest, can mission creep domestically, that's what Eisenhower said. And now it's mainstream news that our government created al-Qaeda in 1979, Zbigniew Brzezinski and Jimmy Carter. That's now mainstream news. 
It's now mainstream news that our government used al-Qaeda to attack the Serbs in the mid-90s. And when the Serbs defended themselves, our government went and bombed their country into the Stone Age so that al-Qaeda could take one-third of their nation. It's on record that, that now they're using them against Libya and Syria and Egypt, who was our pure ally, and that they blew up hundreds of churches and have killed thousands of Christians and killed thousands of Egyptian military in the last two years. And... Our media calls them protesters when they try to blow up oil tankers in the Suez Canal. They're Al-Qaeda. I'm right. I deserve an apology. And I've gotten it from a lot of people. I've had a lot of big mainline conservatives on the show who have apologized to me without me asking. I don't need your apology, though. I just want you to admit I was right, okay? There are criminal elements who are funding radical Islam and allowing it to take over not just the Middle East but other areas to further their geopolitical aims, and that's what I'm saying. And that's what Rand Paul's saying, and that's what Ted Cruz is saying, and that's why Ted Cruz is now under attack. It's, it's, it's ABC News and MSNBC that say every week that I say, like Wiley Coyote, that's a quote by Chris Matthews of Hardball, that I said, he says, quote, Alex Jones says Bush had a plunger like Wiley Coyote and blew up the towers. I never said that. I said that I interviewed the head of the U.S. Embassy from Jeddah who was ordered to let Mohammed Atta and 14 other of the reported hijackers into the U.S. and was told the CIA says that they work for them. Now, I saw the guy in the Toronto newspaper saying that. I called Springman up, got him on. Months after 9-11, he went public. I've talked to all the witnesses. They bare minimum allowed them to attack us, period, so they could then take my rights and take your rights. Just like Adam Lanza and all these other people are on all these psychotropic drugs, their psychiatrist that comes out with the case of the Aurora shooting, knew what was coming, nothing's done. Same deal. They're, they, they are doing everything they can to use these events to enslave us all. We're going to come back and play excerpts from the Alamo event and our confrontation with the gun grabbers straight ahead. 1,500 plus people, over 1,000 of them armed in defiance of an unconstitutional city ordinance in front of the Alamo, reigniting the spirit of Travis and others that died at the Alamo, Davy Crockett, other legends. But then in the next segment, I'm gonna get into a video and an article that's up on Infowars.com that just went up in the last hour. Photos, anti-gun rally gets virtually no participants. We were told, look out, the million moms are gonna come march down here and get in your face. Well, they never showed up, so once the rally was about half over, it was about noon, it was going to go till 2, I'd already spoken. I uh, went and talked to the San Antonio police chief to an interview with him. I'm going to air tomorrow. And then marched on down the 10 blocks to where the Moms Demand Action were located. So that's coming up in the next segment. There were less than five of them. But the international media was there. And I noticed mainstream media lied about their numbers and then tried to water down our numbers. That's why the mainstream media is now the dead media, the dinosaur media. <clears throat> now, continuing here, imagine the first demonstration because the daughters of the Republic of Texas since the 40s, when they took over the Alamo, have never allowed any, quote, political demonstrations or any other speeches, period. Well, it's not political, as the land commissioner said. It's a God-given right. These men died over the right to keep and bear arms. That was the main reason in the Declaration of Independence, in the War of Independence for the country, for the Republic of Texas. It's on record. Just like in 1775, the Redcoats came to take the guns. And so I didn't realize until I got there. And the media was asking me, so you're going to be one of the first speakers ever since the Alamo in 1836 to speak here. And I went back and did some research. It was a warehouse until the late 30s, leaking and falling down, and part of it was a horse barn. And it had fallen down, basically. I mean, it was just the place where the Alamo happened. And so it didn't become big until John Wayne made the Alamo and the 50s and films in the 60s. And so there has never been a political speech, as they call it, any type of speech about liberty, about issues there until yesterday. And I'm glad that Jerry Patterson 
had the guts to go out there and to reverse this unconstitutional move because it's not political. It's exactly what Davy Crockett and William Barrett Travis would want, undoubtedly. And there were some amazing speeches there. But the larger issue is the psychology of the anti-gunners. They know what they're doing. They want to make guns unacceptable. They want to make them taboo in the hands of citizens. doesn't matter if Chicago and New York and D.C. have the highest crime rates in the U.S., Chicago the highest crime rate for a city in the world because there's a total gun ban. It doesn't matter if Mexico has a gun ban and they have the highest crime rate for a country in the world. And Mexico City is number four only behind three U.S. cities that have gun bans. I mean, those are the facts. It doesn't matter if there's a 49% drop in crimes using guns and overall crimes down over 60% since 1992. And most studies show that guns are the main contributing factor. Gun ownership goes up. Criminals are scared. Two weeks in Dallas after concealed carry went in decades ago, carjackings ended. Women getting grabbed in Florida and other states months after concealed carry went in ended in parks because most women have fanny packs packing heat or at least the criminals know a lot of them do i mean this is common sense but then they get these emotional useful idiots as i call them to go out and say you don't need a gun we don't but we don't want to ban your guns we just want to restrict them well everywhere the anti-gunners are in control they take all the guns and i just want to point out that and the videos are up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We have the wide shots. We have video, high def out of the Hyatt across the street, showing the real crowd. And most people that came, you know, had stuff to do. So they'd stay about an hour during the four plus hour. It was actually about a six hour event, but four hours at the Alamo, two hours marching through the city. It was, it, the police estimated a thousand. I estimate 1,500 at one time, probably 2,000 total, because people came and went. And it was so buoying, such, so uplifting, that when I get around socialists and collectivists, they shuffle around like zombies. They have no fire in their eyes. Uh, they seem like just totally pathetic, just, 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 just slaves of the system. They, they believe in the system like a domesticated animal. You ever seen how domesticated squirrels or pigeons are pathetic? I mean, they just, they just don't have that wildness to them, that freedom. To look in the eyes of the Hispanic, black, white, Asian, you name it, totally multiracial crowd. I'd say it was about 60% white, but the rest was Hispanic folks and black folks. All of them just had the electricity of life in their eyes. They had, they had a spirit of liberty about them. They were proud. They were honorable. They were good. And they had an instinct to not be disarmed and defanged, declawed. And it was just so wonderful to be around them. Uh, there's nobody I admire more, I realize now, than open carry folks that defy illegal laws and get arrested and defeat and overthrow these laws. And the fact that they said, oh, there's going to be mass shootings. Oh, it's going to be horrible. Nothing happened. Not a firearm discharge, not an accident, not a problem. When I see cops with guns, I feel confident. I know the average cop's a well-meaning person that wants to help their community. When I see citizens with guns, I feel even better. The criminal's going to come sneaking up in the dark on me. Not 1,500 people, 1,000 of them armed with their so-called assault rifles and shotguns. And I saw folks with non-black powder guns. I saw black powder guns. I saw regular handguns, even that were defying the fake state law. And the cops stood down because they knew it was the right thing to do. And they also understood there were a lot of people going down there, folks, that were just like Lexington, just like Concord, just like the Alamo, who aren't looking for trouble but just can't bend over anymore, can't lick boots anymore. We're going to go out to break with a few minutes of my speech. The full speech is up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. I'm going to tweet it out at RealAlexJones on Twitter as well if you want to follow us there. But here's a few minutes of my speech that blew my voice out at the historic. I, I can't believe it. No speeches since the Alamo have happened there. This is on record. And now I gave one of the first speeches. I'm so honored to give one of the first speeches since these men gave their lives with such incredible honor. Here it is. Please welcome Alex Jones. Give me liberty or give me death! First off, I want to salute everybody who came out here in defiance of tyranny! 
options go one way or the other. You either become more free or you become enslaved. And there are only a few countries worldwide where you can still own firearms. Governments worldwide controlled by powerful anti-free market corporate interests like Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan and others have financed programs from Australia to France, from England to South Africa to disarm the people. Whether it was King George 235 years ago who wanted disarmed slaves, or whether it was Santa Ana 177 years ago, or whether it was Adolf Hitler or Mao Zedong, these scumbags are all the same! They are bullies that think we're going to lay down to them and lick their boots. I can assure you that if William Barrett Travis was here, or the others that died in this sacred shrine were here, they would give us a rebel yell of liberty! I can assure you they knew full well they were going to die, but they were so angry watching people tied up and shot in the back of the head all over Texas because they wouldn't turn their guns in that they came down here to show an example of what you do in the face of tyrants. And that's what you're doing here right now, today. And I'll tell you, I'm no different than my ancestors. You're no different than your ancestors. My ancestors on both sides. We'll be right back, my friends, on the other side when I later confront the victim disarmament crew and they go absolutely ape and meltdown. The full video is on Infowars.com. I want to hear from folks that were there, 877-789-2539. That's the number to join us. And I'm not bragging, but of the 1,500 to 2,000 people that were there over the four hours plus, about half of them are wearing Infowars.com t-shirts. We have video of that. And most of them were listeners. I'd say about 90%, which is exciting. Um, but And then I left and marched down the 10 blocks to go confront the gun grabbers, and every other person we walked by literally was a listener. It just blew me away. Uh, you can go to uh, Infowars.com and see live feeds we put up. We were out there live streaming and see just what I'm talking about. But photos, anti-gun rally gets virtually no participants. It was a uh, anti-gun rally against our demonstration is the big issue. They came out to protest our pro-gun rally. So protest against pro-gun rally gets four people. That's probably the real headline. But, uh, and the video is up there. And we went and found it. It was this open-air taco shop restaurant. And there were about 10 people there out by the gate, and we said, are, are you anti-gunners? They said, no, we found out where it was and figured you'd be coming here. We're listeners. And then I found four people, two men and two women, who were with Moms Demand Action, one of these Bloomberg uh, gun grabber groups. By the way, they're recalling all the people in Colorado that voted to ban guns right now. They've already recalled a bunch of them. Now when a recall starts, the state reps are just resigning because they've learned. <laughs> I mean, you're all gone. And we show up. And they're totally polite. And this woman comes up and rams me in the arm. Her husband comes up and butts up with his chest up against me. Another guy threatens to kick my butt. And I'm like, I'm just here to give you statistics that guns, more guns means less crime. I want to go to this video report for radio listeners. It's audio. But everybody can go to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and see the photos and see the high-def video of the million gun grabber march that was actually four people and again at the taco shop there were like seven or eight people eating a taco at you know one o'clock that weren't part of anything and drinking beer there were four anti-gunners about 10 other folks that showed up there were our listeners four people four people and they kept saying we don't want your guns when they're on record wanting them uh, here is the report we want to interview the moms the marching what million mom march or whatever they are you know where they are down there maybe we have no yeah. idea we that's us that. asking we the cops even find them so we're going to go look for them and ask them a few questions about why they like gun control why they like statistically more deaths and why they like mexico so but we're trying we can't even find them anywhere are you the head of the local organization no i'm not i'm the head of the local organization. hey how you doing i'm alex jones hi how are you doing good 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 yeah good. so so tell us tell us about what you're doing here today well i'm is this 
I would prefer to um, to have just a moment to talk to you off camera before we, you know, you bring your cameras in to our event. Is that okay? Well, he's he's just right there. No, I he's on. It's, it's just First Amendment. You're a public group. We're just wondering. I thought this was to raise awareness. If crime rates have dropped 49 percent since 1992 yes. because of uh, gun ownership increasing. Why we want to be like Mexico, where they've taken all the guns, they have the highest crime rate in the world, or Chicago? Okay, I'm not going to stand here and be bullied by you into having a conversation that you know, um, is Mr. not. Jones, whoa, you, no, whoa, you just, whoa, shake your hand. she just yes. ran into me. I know, I came over to ask you to please. Wow, well, you just, that, that's like a oh, soul. Yes. Yeah, is it well, a you, public event? Why did you touch me? Because you, I don't like you. You don't like me? No. Why? Why did you leave her alone? We're having a peaceful time here. Well, I just don't You're want anybody talking. to touch me. You already slammed into me. You're not going to touch me, are you, sir? Go away. We don't want you here. We don't want you. What, What's wrong? We were so friendly. Public event is this. We don't want any exposure. We thought you wanted press. We're press. We're here to be friends. Okay, round and go. It went really well. We're going to have more of them. We're going to take our civil rights back. You're taking your civil rights? Just like in 1776. Who took, your, who took your civil rights? They've taken the guns in Chicago, New York, D.C. Uh, taking your guns? Feinstein says the goal is to ban all the guns. It says right here. Nobody's trying to take your toys. They haven't, they haven't taken the guns. Assault weapons. Ban assault weapons. They're not trying. Says right here. That's all semi auto. Shut up and let me talk. Oh, yes, ma'am. You are not. You are not saying that correctly. We want to ban. She wants to ban assault weapons in the. Diane Feinstein, you're the one that brought her up. But Bloomberg wants a total ban. Wait, wait, wait. But they don't want to confiscate people that are. Did they confiscate guns in New Orleans? Picking up every one of them. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. I would have done it. Have they banned the guns in Chicago and New York and D.C.? No, they have not. They have not I banned the guns. You do not want our guns. That's, that's, well, good. We want your guns. Good. We so, don't want you here. Santa Ana wanted the guns. In reality and statistics, you're very upset. We're very sorry no. that we brought facts and reality. What about the 49% drop in violent crime since 1992 because of gun ownership don't going up? I, I'm a libertarian. Shake my hand. Come on. Want a hug? How about a hug? How about a hug? Come on. Come on. I support Yeah, here, here. We're being nice about this whole thing. Yeah, how about be friends? Here. What's your name? Matt. Matt. Yeah. Matt, listen, you know Hitler was for gun control. It's going to be 70, 76 again, isn't it? Well, well, we're trying to avert. The we're, conversation, we're trying to avert 1776. Once you bring up Hitler, you're obviously not serious about the conversation. Oh, no, but Lenin, Lenin and Stalin Lenin, and Mao, Stalin, Hitler, it's just, Santa Ana, they all came to take the guns. Governments don't try to take the guns. Uh -huh. Well, here's like people that like gun control had, ban them all in like Chicago, New York, and D.C. So, so why wouldn't we think that there's really a plan to register them and take them if they've taken them other places? Real question. Why do you assume I'm for that? Uh, no, no, but I'm saying the bills they're trying to move forward. The mayor pro team of Boston Bruce, Bruce, said, Bruce, Bruce. once we register your guns, we will confiscate them. That there is no gun ban currently, but because of the work that we're doing here today, we will make your side legitimate shortly. So you hang on to that. You may be one of the more moderate members, but that's the point. It says, it says ban assault weapons, which is even semi-automatic, and ammunition magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. This is, this is a Bloomberg. You guys don't take money from Bloomberg. No money from Bloomberg. Your rally that you think was so successful, it's so well accepted in Texas, does not accept it nationwide. And that'll be used to get guns other places. I know, but here's the deal. We are desensitizing people, just like you guys say. The Attorney General said we've got to brainwash people that guns can't even be seen in the hands of citizens. So we're not brainwashing, we're reversing. We're openly saying, look, we have a right to own guns. I don't want people walking around with assault rifles on their backs, walking into Walmart, Starbucks. I, we don't need but that. But you like cops with guns everywhere. Yes, I Can want I the answer cops your to question? have guns. Here's the deal, yes. we're going to have the guns everywhere, and if you guys try to take them, I don't 1776. Want the cops. <laughs> you, you, you know guys, what a gun grab is? It's something that nobody in this country wants. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them. M Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. I would have done it. A gun grab is something that nobody in this country well, wants. sir, all I can say is you are really getting in my space. Like your wife come over and push up against well, me. Why don't you back up? No, I'm not going to back up. Good. You're the one who got in my space. You know Look what? at this. Look at this guy. Stop. All right, go ahead. Stop. You, you, Stop. Listen, I don't want to beat an old guy up. 
So don't touch me, all right? This guy could You're take just... you out in a heart. I bet he could. Scared. I'm not violent. Why do you think it's okay to sell a gun to someone that you don't know that's not been through a background check? Should we have a, should we have a background check for bathtubs every time we take a bath? We should have a background oh. check for guns. Should we have a background check for knives? You don't believe in a background okay. check? No. Have you heard about... We all know it's a bill. registration. We have your documents. Have you read the bill 1565 that says it's against the law to keep a registration and it's a $15,000 fine? But they've caught them keeping it. They've caught them keeping it. I what do you think about myself. knives? I mean, there's Ronnie, a knife sweetheart. assault. You're giving them what they want. Don't do it anymore. Listen, don't listen to the facts. Don't listen to the statistics. Just yell at us and well, call us names. That thing. is the only thing that works. Did you know assault rifles are used in 2% of crimes? I know an assault rifle was used to murder my daughter in Aurora. I know that. Well, I'm sorry that... Yeah, you're, you're sorry. Not. I didn't curse no, your daughter. Not. I mean, that's the big issue is there's probably five people here against the guns. And they're, and they're claiming, it's probably true, there's a guy with a lot of sadness in his eyes, that it's his loved one that was lost at Aurora, and that that's basically our fault. And the, and the media is preying on these victims of gun control and gun-free zones like movie theaters, schools, and military bases, where the SWAT team was ordered to stand down at the Naval Yard. They are preying on us. And they're preying on people that have had loved ones that are lost in our pain to then blame others that have the right to self-defense when overall in the aggregate, guns are saving more lives than they're losing by 40 plus percent to That's one. That's right. Government killed 262 million people, 20th century, major university studies, look up democide, that's non-military deaths. Government's the threat. This is a short little segment. Your calls are coming up in the next segment. But I wanna address the older gentleman and his wife, the woman that slapped me on the arm or grabbed my arm kind of a pushing, grab, slap, whatever you want to call it, and then he kind of slapped at her, and then they were, he butted up against me. And then he said, I lost my daughter at Aurora. And I said to him, well, you know that the, the psychiatrist that was over him had a notebook and everything was being planned, and he was on these drugs that say that they make people go out and kill folks, and overall shootings are down, but weird mass shootings are up a little bit. It's hyped up in the media, and... You've got the full video. We'll probably air it tomorrow. And they wouldn't even listen to it. And I said, listen. I said, it says on the insert it can make you commit mass murder. It can make you go out and do all these horrible things. It can make you have megalomania, become psychopathic. They got 20% of the population on these. They've got U.S. military doing weird massacres when they're on it. Nobody's ever acted like this. These psychotropics, they didn't want to hear it. And then some other guy, we've got like 30 minutes of this footage, threatened to attack me and everything. I'm not the enemies of these people. Let's put the article up on screen for TV viewers. There's a San Antonio Express News article. Mom's rally focuses on gun safety, common sense. If you scroll down, it's got her, got her name right there. Sandy Phillips, and then her husband had a different name. I don't know if it's a, re, a remarried, uh, but uh, Lonnie and, and uh, Sandy Phillips. But the point is, and, and there's the police chief meeting with them, and there and are two or three supporters Think of how sick this is, though. They've lost their daughter because in a gun-free zone, a movie theater, in an anti-gun area of Colorado, somebody on multiple psychotropics who in his own notebook was telling his psychiatrist reportedly, who was a top Air Force psychiatrist for some reason, that he was going to go kill people and then nothing stopped him. And then it was reported in the news, he told people in the jail in Aurora, I'm under mind control, I'm in a government program. I mean, it turned out that Theodore Kaczynski, the Unabomber, was. That's L.A. Times. So we're just saying this is very suspicious. They got really upset at that. But what I do know is this. When a bad cop rapes a woman or a bad cop shoots somebody because they're on a power trip and crazy, do you blame every cop? You shouldn't. When somebody takes a car, they've had this happen, well, every few weeks you see it, and drives through some crowd of people. If it's a Mercedes or a Ford or a Chevy or a Toyota or a Nissan or a Doc, Datsun, do you blame Chevrolet? Do you blame GMC? Do you blame Saab? Do you blame Volkswagen? No, you blame the person that did it. When somebody goes into, they don't have guns in Japan, so they're always having mass school stabbings. They had like 14 killed once with a guy with a knife. Do you then blame owners of butcher knives? No, you blame the person with the object. And if you look up the FBI's own crime statistics that we've done countless reports on, you can look them up. Guns are used 40 plus times for every time they're used in crime. 
they're used to frustrate crime. And crime using guns is down 49% conservatively. That's the Justice Department's own numbers. Some numbers are over 60% since 1992. And I mean, I tried to give them these facts. You can't collectively blame me. Here's an example right here. I'm going to show folks a document cam shot of this. We had over 1,000 people with loaded guns at the Alamo. Nobody got hurt. I'll guarantee you every criminal in San Antonio was steering clear of that because criminals want to act when they think they've got the upper hand. You had these two known reported drug dealers. This happened hours after our rally ended in another part of San Antonio. For fun, probably some gang initiation to a higher level mafia, shoot a cop with a 223 rifle, reportedly an M4, same rifle I had, only 2% of the crime, but still, that was used in this case. Shoot at a cop through the windshield, try to kill him. It hit his computer, blew the glass in his eyes, may have blinded him partially. He's in bad condition, terrible situation. These little criminal blobs, who the witnesses saw do it and everything, they're still suspects. They are criminals. The gun is not at fault. They are the problem. They are the problem. Not thousands of us with guns down the street. No problem. We're the answer to scum like this. We're the answer. Armed cops, armed citizens. We're the answer. 877-789-2539 is the number for folks that were at the historic Alamo rally. I don't know if people realize how historic it was if you just joined us. There has never been a rally since the Alamo in 1836 at that site because it was a warehouse till the 40s. Nobody cared about it until John Wayne made a movie in the 50s or was it in the early 60s about it. And then the Daughters of Republic of Texas wouldn't allow anything political. Well, political isn't just politics as you see it, Republican, Democrat. What about our liberties, our freedoms? That transcends political. It's, it's about being a free human. That's why America was different, because we at least had some basic rights. We weren't perfect, but we were light years ahead of other nations. We're trying to reclaim that and to be out there and just look in the eyes of how Americana everybody was. I mean, the Hispanic folks, the white folks, the black folks, the, the everybody out there just looked like something out of a spaghetti western or something i mean they were just the men were so manly the women were so beautiful the people were so smart the folks were so informed the eyes had the soul had the electricity in them it was so great to be out there with you i i, I am just drunk on liberty right now i've got to tell you right now it was so exciting i want to go to phone calls from folks that were there and then i see some people still called in and got on the board that weren't there i'll go to you too but i want to put people to the front of the line who were there at this historic open carry march in San Antonio, Texas yesterday. The toll free number to join us is 877-789-2539 and we'll take calls till about 45 after. Then I'll get into some big geopolitical news, some George Soros news. They're trying to take Ted Cruz down right now. Uh, we're going to get into the latest on Obamacare. It is all coming up. Again, I'm your host, Alex Jones. The news websites are infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. But I am just so honored, honored that I have such amazing listeners and supporters and, and fellow activists that love freedom and who have liberty beating in their breast. I am humbled to my core. I ran into one gentleman who I'm going to get in studio. He's an artist. Um, in fact, it's back there in my office in my bathroom because I had the jeans I wore yesterday. I changed clothes here last night. It's sitting on top. Right there, you'll see a whole bunch of business cards. His name was Mario something, artist. And I saw this guy waving at me who had one arm blown off and then all his fingers blown off to nubs and a patch on his eye. And his face all burned away from uh, being in an IED in Afghanistan. He was also multiple tours in Iraq. And I went over to this guy. There was a World War II vet with him that had come to speak who'd actually been tearing down barricades a week ago in DC and I talked to the World War II vet who did all these combat jumps in Germany, three combat jumps and had most of his buddies killed and I talked to him. The video's up on Infowars.com and then I was talking to this fellow Mario and it was how excited he was and how human he was and how when he told the story about them blowing up their armored vehicle, how glad he was that his buddies weren't hurt as bad as he was. He wasn't just saying that and it wasn't that I was attracted to him because he looked like 
you know, something out of a movie just totally blown away. It was like, there's something about people that have been through the fire and have been destroyed, who've risen like the phoenix. It was something so human about him. I was so attracted to him. That's the kind of person I want to be around and I want to be like. You could say the wars are evil and were frauds, and then of course they were, but these guys joined because they believed it was right and they had courage. And compared to all these ninnying yuppies that are scared of everything and won't stand up for anything and are a bunch of backstabbers, to be around combat vets that are just so strong and have their arms and legs blown off and are being called racist by MSNBC because they dare protest Obama, it was just incredible. I meant to, I'm going to get that guy on. I got a whole stack of business cards in there, and he was one of them. And I want to see his art, too, because he's an artist now. That's how he... That's how he pays for everything with his, his arm blown off to the shoulder, whole body burned, one eye out. Just and it, and it was, but his humanity. There's something about somebody who's been blown away and all the looks are gone, but the soul shines through. It's almost like beauty gets in the way of the soul. And it was just right there. I could, I could, I could see his soul. And that was so much for me. Let's go ahead and uh, go to your phone calls. Let's talk to uh, somebody who was at the Alamo, Diane in Texas. You were at the Alamo, historic, 177 years later. The ghost of the ghost of William Barrett Travis spoke again. No one has spoken for the right of self-defense since then on that side. And now the, the curse of telling people not to stand up has been broken. Diane, what did you think about being there? It actually gave me a glimmer of hope for our country to see mothers and fathers and their children, little kids, teenagers, black people, white people, brown people. I mean, the diversity was remarkable. This and, was and humanity, tried, but we all had the same spirit. Yes, and, and I, I try to go to rallies for things I believe in, and they tend to be predominantly white. And I'm like, where are our brothers? Well, that's because MSNBC color? says... If anything is for freedom, it's racist, and it scares people away. We've I, My mission, I realize now, is to break that. We've got to bring everybody in for freedom. Go ahead. Well, my husband and I went. Um, we don't have long guns, but we wanted to support the movement and be a part of history, and it was so exciting and amazing. We were there from the very beginning speech until shortly after yours, and then we had to go. We couldn't stay for the duration, but I wish we could have. And yeah, that's why I think there was 2,000 or more, because the police estimated 1,000. But most folks are hardworking or they got family to do. You know, I would see different crowds over there. It was a big, might have been 5,000 there. I mean, it was 1,000 at any one time over six hours. There, there was a guy with his beaded yarmulke and his dress suit and his sign that said, gun control isn't kosher. I mean, there, there were no boundaries. Of, well, people of instinctively get that if they're disarmed, they're enslaved. And they've taken the guns everywhere. Yeah, so thank you for your work. And it was it was a real honor to have been a part of history. Oh, it was an honor to be there with you, Diane. Did I get a chance to meet you? No, you didn't. But I saw Jakari and I saw you and y'all are awesome. No, you're awesome. And, and, and uh, the keynote speaker, whose name is escaping me right now, Jerry Patterson. Oh, my gosh, we all need to get him in, into a new no, office. No, no, Jerry Patterson, let me tell you, he is tireless fighter for the Second Amendment. I mean, he's the real deal. That's why the San Antonio Express News spent, like, two different reporters trying to get him to talk bad about me because they want to divide us. That, I, mean, I mean, that's all they want to do. But there I was with an M4 strapped on my back in defiance of that unconstitutional law down there. This is what it's all about. God bless you, ma'am. Mahatma Gandhi, if you look it up, in fact, print up the actual history for me because I don't want to get it wrong. He marched like 500 miles through India. You would be given years in prison if you mined salt or got it from the ocean and sold it. You got to have salt to cook, everything. And he marched famously, the guy that freed India from British imperial rule, to the sea. And by the end of it, hundreds of thousands joined him and gathered their own salt at the sea. And that was the beginning of the end of the British Empire in India. And it's the same thing. They say, you can't have your guns in San Antonio. Yes, we can. Come and take it. And the police did the right thing. And I can tell the police admired us. Five-tier vet of Iraq and Afghanistan who had his arm blown off and his whole body burned and lost an eye is Mario Lopez. 
and I was just remembering him here on the show, and there's an interview we uploaded or shot live out there, streamed, that's up on Infowars.com. But his, his website is paintingsbymariolopez.com. And I almost don't want to give a side out because I want to buy a bunch of these for the office. This guy is an incredible artist. I mean, world-class stuff. And he's a big listener. And again, I looked across the whole crowd and saw this one guy waving at me with his hand that had all the fingers blown off. And I saw his totally burned, destroyed face, but saw that human beauty in it. And he was more beautiful than the entire crowd of people out there. I don't know how to describe it. Just amazing. I don't mean to sit there and go on and on. I've been to a lot of veterans memorials and events to see people that are burned and destroyed, but uh, he's not destroyed. He's a person of honor. And he's a great artist. I love his card. In fact, find that picture that's in there of the trees with the blue and the orange in the background. That's what he's got on this card. We're going to get him in studio very, very soon. I'm going to go back to your phone calls. It's just that uh, if you want to go there and check out his paintings, it's uh, paintings by Mario Lopez com. Wow, look at that. That's the one I want. In fact, I want to call him before everybody gets it. That's the painting I want for our office right there. I mean, that is like Van Gogh level right there. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a phone call from folks that were at the historic Alamo Second Amendment rally. Let's talk to Bob in Texas. You're on the air, Bob. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. Man, I want to tell you, my wife and myself, we were there. And I felt very honored to be there. Both of us did. We met so many great people, liberty-minded people, and it was just, it was incredible. It's an incredible experience. Well, we are the seeds. If this republic's going to survive. And, and yeah, you know, it's like it's people that love God, love life, and love liberty. You know, I didn't, I didn't open carry for personal reasons, but, you know, this is a weird thing. I took a slingshot. I went to Wally World and I bought a slingshot, wrist rocket. You know, because I figured they tr might try to outlaw them one day. Oh, they will. And and I so I I, I put a, a scripture on here, First Samuel seventeen fourteen. I mean seventeen forty five is. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord. And let me tell you, I got a lot of response. I even showed it to the Chief McManus. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, guess what? I had kinfolk that died there. His name is William William Wells, and I stood in front of that uh, monument, and there was a fellow patriot who said, "Hey, you want your picture taken there?" I said, "Yeah, sure," because I said, "Man, I had kinfolk that died here," and I put my hand, I, I rubbed my hand on his on his name. You know, he's William Wells from Georgia, and uh, he said, "Yeah," he said, "Hey, I've got a gun." He said, "You." You want? He said, "It's a 22 squirrel shooter, single shot." He said, "But you want to pose by it?" I said, "Well, sure." And he gave it to me, and I, I had two flags. I had the Liberty or Death, Don't Tread on Me, and the Spirit of '76. And uh, I was wearing my dad's uh, Strategic Air Command cap in honor of him. And I was in the Air Force, but I, I wrote, put that in honor of him. And uh, and I want to tell you, the spirit of the people there, I met so many great people. I met a guy that drove to Beaumont. He heard that, you're, that you were going to be there, and he drove, him and his wife uh, was on another trip, and then they drove all the way back to San Antonio to be there. And I met them in the, at the Minger Hotel. And I want to tell you, I met so many Liberty lovers. This was outstanding, absolutely. And I'm, I'm on a high from it. I blew my voice out. And I kind of got a frog in my throat, you know, for yelling and everything and, and waving my flag. And, and I just want to say, and I was handing out the citizen's rule book. I want to thank you for keeping your prices down on the flags, you know, because you're not making anything. I've shared flags with people out there. Sure, we sell flags and citizen rule books at cost at InfoWarsStore.com because it's all about getting the word out. God bless you, brother. Yeah, I know. It, it was incredible. Thank you for the call to meet all these great people. It was just Life-changing event, and I, I didn't realize that Jerry Patterson bucked worldwide media on allowing a, quote, political event. It was just free speech. The people died for the right to keep mayor arms at the Alamo 177 years ago, and we should have been making it a shrine of the Second Amendment the whole time. <laughs> and now Patterson's done that. That's good. That's what it should be used for. I would imagine that Davy Crockett's been spinning in his grave until now, and now he can rest in peace. Uh, let's talk to Shipley in Texas. You were there, brother. Go ahead. Yes, sir. 
Give us your take on it. Well, I was uh, I was the one that was talking to you about the uh, the drones that I captured over the NSA base. That's and, right. Uh, you sent that. Uh, there's an NSA base, NSA base in San Antonio used by the globalists to spy on people, not for national security. And you say you sent that to us in our Dropbox. We'll get that up in the next few days, brother. Tell us what you saw. It was beautiful, man. I mean, it was just uh, it was one of those most electric things I've ever been to. And I got to meet Stuart Rhodes, which was amazing. That guy is that guy is just a polite gentlemen and so are you i was i was thoroughly impressed man just wanted to say thank you for being a true texan well i'm just a free human that doesn't want to be a slave and i know that in my speech i talked about jp morgan and goldman sachs giving money to the anti-gun groups they are the main anti-gun groups i mean they give money to take our guns why would foreign Above the law, tax-exempt banks want our guns. Because then they politically dominated us. They can have the government raise taxes on us and give it to them in banker bailouts like Warren Buffett. So it's very simple. Foreign offshore banks are lobbying to take our guns and our free speech and our privacy. And, and you know, I kept telling the media, I don't just come out and rally for the Second Amendment. I defend the First, the Fourth, the Tenth, the Ninth, all of it, voting rights, all of it. That's what it comes down to. Anything else, brother? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that it was it was the most electric thing that I've ever been to, and it motivated me so much that I'm going to look into starting my own uh, my own show here in San Antonio. That you know, do it, do it. God bless you, brother. Do it. Everybody has to be a leader. Let's go to one more call before we go to break. Chris in Texas, you were there. Got about a minute and a half. Go ahead. Okay, Alex, I'll get to it real quick. I uh, saw something behind the scenes that I was thoroughly impressed with yesterday, other than the, the whole thing, which was great. I was standing stage right uh, behind Patterson prior to his speech. I was directly behind him, and I saw him chit-chatting with a lot of the other uh, people that were going to be speaking. A lot of them were politicians, and, and he was making it extremely clear to them that this was not a political platform. And I heard several of them. I heard every one of these conversations, and several of them would say, "Well, I'm going to say what I'm going to say." And he said, "Look, I, uh, you know, I sanctioned this as the GLO, and this is not a political. You know, this is about uh, Texans' right to bear arms and so on and so forth." And I loved it when he got up there and started speaking. And and I don't know if you caught this uh, part of his speech, but he was speaking to those people that, that told him that they were going to say what they were. No, no. I mean, look for. Say. I mean, in defense of Patterson, so was, no one's given a political speech there. It isn't political. It's about an individual right. He was saying it's not about politics, left or right. It's about human freedom. I'll tell you what, I'll come back to you and let you finish your point. I don't want to cut you off, uh, Chris. We'll go to Phil, who was there, and uh, we'll go to Steve and then others. If you want to get in on the air, if you were there, this is your chance for you. 877-789-2539 or 877-789-ALEX. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. Stay with us. The sands of time for all of us are running low. All that we leave behind is the basic freedoms, the basic ideas. That's how we live forever, through our children, through their children, and their children. Thank you for joining us. We're going to go back to your phone calls. Got a bunch of news and a host of issues I haven't gotten to yet in the final segment coming up. But I was just reading Real Alex Jones on Twitter to see if my last Twitter went out about uh, sending out the link to the video dealing with uh, the gun grabbers that showed up, all five of them, to protest us. But there's a there was one, my speech with my rifle on the steps of the Alamo, assert your, indiv uh, assert your individual rights over serfdom or slavery. And the third or fourth guy down called Gustav Strazik says, remember that the racist lost at the Alamo. And I went to this guy's site and he's like some Democratic Party operative type guy. And I just thought how crazy that is. They teach that in the schools. They teach that in the control corporate media. They demonize the Alamo and George Washington before them. None of it had to do anything with racism. The guy that wrote the Constitution for the U.S. Uh, or for the Texas uh, Republic was Hispanic. A bunch of Hispanic folks died at the Alamo. They were against the dictator Santa Ana. In fact, a few years later, Santa Ana got overthrown in southern Mexico by the people in Mexico Central. 
Were they racist because they were against Santa Ana the dictator? Was George Washington racist fighting King George III, who he was distantly related to, who was another white British guy? No. <laughs> it's just they inject this because the last thing they want is white, black, Hispanic, old, young, north, south, east, west, Catholic, Protestant, agnostic, Buddhist, Jewish, Muslim, coming together around a basic Bill of Rights and Constitution, coming together around basic human rights, coming together around the family and private property and due process. And I mean, I want that for everybody. I want everybody to be treated like a human being. But the authoritarians of our age inject racial and religious and cultural division because they don't want us to discover the culture of liberty. The corrupt establishment is threatened by it. We've got to come together. But I saw this on YouTube videos and on my Twitter the last few days. The racist Alamo, the racist lost, the white Travis lost. You're going to get it. All of this racial hatred. It's incredible when the sacrifice of the Alamo belongs to everybody. These are people injecting racial issues because they're using racial politics to control people. Just like MSNBC, just like Rachel Maddow, Al Sharpton, all of them. It is disgusting. Let's go to your phone calls. Let's go to a bunch of them. Chris in Texas, you were at the historic first ever Second Amendment, pro-gun rally since 1836. You were there. What would you think? I was thoroughly impressed. I, I got to meet you, Alex. I, I really appreciated your speech, and I really appreciated everybody's passion. And I was uh, completely just, I can't tell you how good I felt that I'm not alone in the feelings that I have. And, and if you would allow me, I'd like to channel Alex Jones for two sentences. Go ahead. The first rule of Liberty Club is tell everybody about Liberty Club. And the second rule of Liberty Club is tell the story about Liberty Club. Hey, we ought to do a liner. Let's call our guy that does liners. The first rule of Liberty Club is tell everybody about Liberty Club. The second rule of Liberty Club is tell everybody about Liberty Club. That's genius. Whether you're black, white, Hispanic, got two parents that love you that are Hispanic and white or black and white or old or young or Catholic, Protestant, or your mama's an atheist and your daddy's a Christian, whatever. We want freedom. We want it now. We're not buying the corporate fraud that's funding to turn our guns in and turn our due process in. We want all our rights. We want them now. They were paid for over and over again by blood, and we're demanding it now. We're standing again. All the malls and Hollywood and all the fake culture means nothing. It's empty without liberty, and you just said it. Anything else, brother? That's it, Alex, and thanks for all you do. Thank you, Chris. Don't thank me, brother. It was great to be with you down there. It's so amazing. I just feel humbled by this. Phil in Texas, you were there. Tell us what you thought. It, w it was good, and I think uh, – thanks for taking my call, by the way. And I, I think that was the best schooling – that you and uh, Jay Stang and Mr. Patterson and the rest could have done for the for the locals in San Antonio that could ever have been done. I've been an auto body man uh, working in San Antonio for 25 years, and knowing the people, a lot of the men, many of them were what I would call as a kid uh, city slickers, not to be mean to them, but they've never hunted for, for meat, not just to kill. And when, when I've ever talked to them about gun rights, it's like, you're speaking to somebody that's talking about uh, outer space or something. So I think that rally yesterday, and I was there till 12:30 from 10 till 12:30, um, and I think it was real good. And the only thing I could think that, that should have been maybe mentioned was the, the the possibility of UNESCO taking control of our Alamo. Uh, that's right. They are trying year. to uh, make it a UN cultural site, which will yeah. put it under UN regulations. Good point. I'm sure Jerry Patterson will stand against that. God bless you, brother. I want to go to another caller before we go to break and come back and cover news and take a few final calls on this Sunday edition. We'll be back tomorrow, Lord willing, 11 a.m. Central. 
with the weekday um, broadcast, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, show times and free podcast and video and audio feeds are at infowars.com forward slash show and prisonplanet.com as well. But look, just 20 years ago, people had rifles in their rifle racks and their pickups and the cops wouldn't harass you. Just 20, 30 years ago, people could walk down a rural road with a gun and not be messed with. Uh, just 40-something uh, years ago, my father in high school, I guess about 45 years ago, could take his shotgun to school and put it in his locker to go hunting with his coaches for dove and quail after school. They have demonized our right, made it dirty, made it bad, made law-abiding citizens with weapons responsible for what criminals do illegally. It's all fraud. Throw off the guilt. Stop buying into it. We're done. We're not going along with it anymore. Now, I've got a bunch of news economically, Obamacare, Ted Cruz. They're trying to sink him right now. We've got to stand with Ted Cruz, a great patriot in my view, when we come back. But we will talk to Steve and Scott and John and Elizabeth and another John. We'll give each caller about one minute. I'll try to shut up, not comment. When we come back, my voice is blown out. Thanks for putting up with me today. I kind of got a little excited there at the rally. We're going to come back and go to these four or five callers that are lined up and then hit the final news in the final segment of this transmission. But again, history's happening. History didn't just happen in the time of George Washington or Colonel Travis. It's happening now. Be part of it. Nobody rides for free. They gave their lives so you'd have basic liberty and freedom. Will you speak out? Will you stand up? Will you get involved? Will you do one one hundredth of what others have done for you? That's the question. Here's an article by Kit Daniels that just went up on Infowars.com. Despite media fear-mongering, no injuries at open carry gun rally at the Alamo. Rally turns the Alamo into the safest place in America. That article is now up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And I'm not trying to talk like Clint Eastwood. This is what my voice sounds like now. Alex Jones rallies at the Alamo with gun owners for open carry. I never tried to be like this liberty leader and all this stuff. I didn't want to have like the voice of Clint Eastwood. He's trying to sound cool. <laughs> I realize what I sound like while I'm talking. It sounds crazy. It's like a fireside chat. We're battling for the republic against the worldwide banker takeover. And this is how I actually sound. It's crazy. <laughs> I can't believe it. All right, let's go to your phone calls. I got some final news to hit here. Steve and Tejas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, amigo. Hey, buddy. Talk to you again. <clears throat> hey, I, I'm kind of surprised you didn't start the show with uh, your popping of champagne. Golly, we haven't won the war, but that was a heck of a battle to win yesterday. What a, what a great experience. I wanted to give a quick shout-out to uh, Bob, one of your earlier callers. I actually met him. He was the one that referenced the slingshot, and I met him in person yesterday and got a chance to visit with him. And what a great American. And It was just electric. It was awesome. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to hit real quick is, number one, Jerry Patterson, man, he's for real. That guy's awesome. He's a member of my church. To see what he said yesterday, I mean, it was just, he's the real deal, and, and I, I love it. Uh, really? What <laughs> church does he go to in Austin? Uh, Bethany, Bethany Lutheran. Uh, I go to the average church. It's like worship government, turn your guns in. Doesn't matter if it's Baptist, Methodist. Okay, Bethany, Lutheran, interesting. Yeah, give it a whirl. It's next door to Bowie High School. Give it a whirl sometime. Love to have you. Um, <clears throat> the, the other thing I, I just thought was awesome was I remember we were, we were talking to my daughter. We brought our five-year-old down with us yesterday. And we were talking about the Alamo and the importance of it and trying to explain it to a five-year-old is sometimes a little bit difficult as I, I know you have young ones as well. But, man, I'll tell you what, when uh, I, I think his shortened name was Wren, I think his full name was Warren, the 90-year-old World War II veteran that sh stood up and spoke with Stuart, holy smokes. I mean, we all had goosebumps, and I, my, my wife picked my daughter up so that he, she could see him. That was a powerful pointed. speech. We recorded it. That's going to be on the nightly news tomorrow, 7 o'clock Central. We'll probably, if we have it in time, play it on the radio show because all week we're going to be airing these speeches on the, on the weekday show. It was, it was incredible. Yeah, my, my, my wife, Alex, picked, picked my daughter up when he was in the middle of his speech, and, she, and I, heard, I heard my wife say to my daughter, she said, honey, do you want to see a real hero? 
And she pointed at me and said, "Honey, that is a real hero." And and my my, my daughter looked at looked at him and just she she loved it incredibly. The only thing yesterday that wasn't good was that my my daughter was so very mad at me that she did not get a chance to meet you. So I promised her I'd hand her the phone so she could say hi to Alex. Is that okay? <laughs> sure. Okay. All right. Hey, how are you doing? Good. My name's Brady. Uh, so, uh, is Daddy there? Is your dad there with you? Yes, I am. <laughs> she, she she said she had to say hi to Alex Jones. So, <laughs> hey, did you like the the uh, rally at the Alamo, honey? Alamo. I did. Well, good good job. How old are you? Five and three quarters. I had a bir early birthday today, but uh, next Wednesday. This Wednesday, I'm going to have my real birthday because my real birthday is, off, is October 23rd. Well, that's very exciting. God bless you, sweetheart. Thanks hey, for the thanks call. Thanks for all you're doing, Alex. It was a great time. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, it's when I look at my five-year-old daughter or my nine-year-old daughter. I got a son, too. He's amazing. But when I look at my daughters, it's just, you just you don't even worry about yourself anymore. You want a future for them. That's what everything is about here. And we know the way collectivism and slavery leads. It leads towards damnation. We want freedom. And it's time for men to stand for freedom. So exciting. Thank you, Stephen. Let's talk to John in Texas. You were there, John. Go ahead. Is that me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Um, just want to say, uh, Alex, being a, a native of San Antonio, um, I, as far back as I can remember, I've always, I've always, uh, had a special feeling in my in my heart, my gut, for the Alamo and the the sacrifice there. And um, I got to tell you, the, <clears throat> the people I met there yesterday were amazing. Um, met a couple that came from Houston just for this event. Met another man that came over from New Orleans um, by himself just to come visit and be here for the event. Um, and I just thought it was, I just, you know, it was really a, it was a come and take it rally and nobody came to take it we uh that's right we, we stood up so they backed down the, the the enemy creeps in when we're alone and when we're not ready when we stand as men they run and that's what it's all about and the defenders of the alamo wrote letters they knew what they were doing but they were so tired of the tyranny of oppression just like against king george that they were ready to put it all on the line and that's why it's so historic and uh malik uh I was there also for the march to the uh, to Travis Park, uh, where we violated some more city ordinances, and uh, again we're unmolested. And I'm very you uh, were just proud like civil rights activists eating at those lunch counters, brother. You bet. I'm very proud of our police force for telling uh, the uh, police chief to get stuffed. And um, yeah, for those that don't know, the police force refused. He was saying arrest everybody, and the police force and the union said. It's a state law. You're violating it. But McManus is coming along. God bless you, brother. I mean, McManus isn't our enemy. We just we just want to, like, get these people to join the republic, join the free country. We don't want to fight with them. We want them to join us. It's real simple. We want their interest. We want them to be free. We want them to be successful. We're not their enemy. We don't want to fight. But we can't bow down. We can't give in. And we're committed. And when you're committed, you win. Even if they kill you, others rise up later to defend you. That's the big secret they're so afraid of. They're afraid of men. That's why there's a war on men. I'm nothing special. But on my tombstone, they could say, he was a man. Like my ancestors, I am not a slave. I will not give in to you. I will never back down. You may defeat me, but you'll never defeat my spirit. That is the secret of liberty. John in Texas, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex. Yes, sir. It was amazing uh, to be there yesterday. And on a serious note, um, just seeing all those loud patriots there, uh, globalists don't have a shot. I mean, it's over for them. They just don't know it yet. It's over if we seize victory in our hands. I agree. It's just we have to get people to realize that it's over. I mean, when you have, see beautiful women carrying AKs, I mean, you just know, you know, they really don't have a shot. There were a lot of here. beautiful women out there, but I'm a married man. <laughs> but yes, 
A lot of beautiful oh, women with like with like semi-automatic rifles. It was awesome. Uh, they were like yeah. Valkyries or something. I, I was in heaven. <laughs> and I was just there with a the shotgun, um, just trying to stand up, you know, in the city I've lived in for 20 years. Um, it's funny to see you made it to probably the only trendy place in San Antonio, down uh, on South Alamo at that, that place, that bar, wherever, where they were having that mom's. Down at the commie mom's. bar, absolutely. We're out of time, brother. I'm sorry to Scott. And John and Elizabeth, we're out of time. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, 12 noon Eastern, Infowars.com, audio stream, stations, XM 244, it's all there. Sabellus is on the run. Health and Human Services Secretary will not testify to Congress why no one can sign up. I mean, that is a scandal. Tech surge plan to fix Obamacare exchanges. And the Easter Bunny's real. White House pimps another Obamacare success story that wasn't successful. No one has signed up. Report, 476,000 apply for Obamacare. None can sign up. Ron Paul says the longer QE lasts, that's money printing, the worse it will get. Zero hedge. Assassination pushes Libya toward civil war. Two years after Gaddafi's death, after the U.S. put al-Qaeda in charge. Not the U.S., the banksters. And then getting into other news right here, Ted Cruz, folks, is a real patriot of honor. He's getting death threats. They're picking some $6,000 investment he made in his college buddy's firm 20 years ago and claiming he didn't declare it. They're nitpicking all his files, saying he's a fraud. He's a successful lawyer on his own right. We got to stand behind Ted Cruz. They're coming after him. We'll be back tomorrow.